you're looking at a 80 million year old fossil according to the experts the evolutionary experts and where did I find this the American Museum of Natural History fighting dinosaurs okay let's refer to the chart of geological time the evolution and fossil record paleontology okay reptiles appear where in the Paleozoic era notice that go right over and down reptiles appear they appear what year 544 to 245 million years ago do you understand we have little lizards today that date back I haven't changed haven't changed since the Paleozoic era <laughs> no we don't lizards didn't appear until the Jurassic the middle period of the Mesozoic era a lot of folks are confused about what a lizard is it isn't just any old reptile otherwise crocodiles would be lizards too which they obviously aren't before I can explain what a lizard is you have to understand what a reptile is once upon a time, Aristotle defined reptiles as a sort of developmental grade betwixt amphibians and mammals. That's not too far off, considering how, what little data he had to work with. But now we know that Aristotle's evolutionary ladder is incorrect. Real-life biodiversity follows a pattern more like Darwin's tree of life, in which paraphyletic grades just don't make sense. For example, in Linnaean classification, reptiles would at one point encompass all amniote ancestors, including our own, rendering the term meaningless. Because according to the old classification, once something becomes homeothermic, it stops being a reptile. This doesn't make any sense either, since it's impossible to grow out of one's ancestry, and that is exactly the sort of silliness creationists want to make evolution out to be. No. Phylogenetics demands that if the word reptile means anything anymore at all, it can only be a synonym of the word diapsid. Anapsids, like turtles, are generally excluded from the clade because they appear to have diverged prior to the line leading to true reptiles. However, the first anapsids weren't turtles yet. They looked a bit more like lizards. Every amniote did, including the first synapsids, often called mammal-like reptiles, the line leading to therapsids, which eventually include true mammals. There were lots of lineages that looked like lizards, having the form of the modern lizard but not its structure. All these died out before lizards ever showed up. True lizards are very generalized karyotypes of these older orders because some of the smaller ones do retain a superficial resemblance to stem reptiles now collectively called cotylosaurs. But actual lizards are still distinguishable by a suite of typical characteristics, including a type of dermal scale that is unique to the order Squamata. What about a couple of Cretaceous squamates? As I've said before, the further back you look into the fossil record, the simpler and more similar different lineages appear to be, until they appear to converge, becoming virtually indistinguishable. If you trace the ancestry of cats and vivrids back through the fossil record, you'll see that both trees fork at what appear to be a pair of similar sisters. If you keep on joining their line to the stem of all bears, dogs, weasels, and seals, you'll see that all carnivores come from something that doesn't exist anymore but looks rather like a raccoon. This sort of phylogeny can be easily confirmed on many different levels and never deviates. If you trace all mammalian lineages, including marsupials, you'll eventually come to something like a Selenodon. If you trace all amniotes exclusively, you'll come to Selenodonsaurus, which is another animal often mistaken for a lizard, but which really isn't even a full reptile yet in any sense of the word. There were many ancient reptilian lineages, cousins to lizards, several lines of them, that have all disappeared completely but which showed amazing adaptations. Some of these lineages changed in dramatic ways, while others had more subtle variations, but a wider variety of them. Evolution is really, 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 really slow, and it's so slow that you can't see it. Usually that's true, but not always. We've seen some macroevolutionary events occurring in real time, even among lizards. But even if we weren't there to witness it, there are still lots of ways we can trace clues in the present to tell what has gone on in the past. It is also important to remember that evolution works like any other aspect of real life, in that not everything progresses, or progresses at the same speed. It's just like at work. Some employees may suddenly excel soaring through the corporate ranks, while others may still be in the same position doing the same old thing as long as they're there. Some even get demoted. Not everything moves in the same pace or in the same direction, and some don't seem to change much at all. What we have here is lizards haven't changed. They apparently have found their niche, 
and had no need for evolutionary change in the 80 million years that they've been around, or longer, according to the experts. Evolution is an explanation of biodiversity, and lizards are the most diverse of all surviving diapsids. Phytosaurs, pterosaurs, elasmosaurs, ichthysaurs, and many other ancient reptilian orders are all now entirely extinct, leaving squamates to account for roughly 96% of all extant endothermic reptile species. They've diverged into at least a handful of suborders, which then spawned into multiple infraorders and numerous distinct families, dividing into minute genera and sometimes dozens of species each. And that's just the ones we still have now. The 7,500 to 8,000 species estimated to be alive today make no reference to the lizard lineages left behind, including the massive mosasaurs, the largest lizards that ever lived. They were also fully adapted to a marine environment. See, when you look at this, I mean, I see, I see a very small dinosaur. I mean, doesn't it look like a dinosaur? But here it is, modern day dinosaur. No, gear up. Lizards don't look anything like dinosaurs. Why doesn't anybody understand this? Look, this is a lizard. All these are lizards. Varanids, basilisks, geckos, skinks, iguanids, many different orders, some with brilliant adaptations like the little hairs on the toes of geckos. Even snakes are a subset of lizards and they have some specially advanced adaptations too. But this is not a lizard. This is a Tuatara a sphenodon, the last surviving ranchocephalian. Their lineage, plus guamata, make up the clade Lepidosauria, a line closely related to ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, but far removed from archosauria, the group that includes crocodilians, phytosaurs, pterosaurs, and dinosaurs. Ignore what you've seen in the cheesy old movies made by those who don't know anything. There's not even one dinosaur that looks anything like a lizard. It's so obvious it bothers me that no one can see this. For example, take a look at Godzilla. When Toho Pictures created him back in the 50s, they called him a dinosaur. He was supposed to be a theropod, yet his feet are plantigrade and pentadactyl, just like all lizards are, and he stands fully erect, just like lizards do. Then when Tristar spewed forth their totally worthless remake, Best Forgotten, they took the only successful element of the longest-running and most beloved series of cinematic sequels and ruined it on purpose. They took the favorite hero of the kaiju genre and turned it into a bent-over, tetradactyl, digigrade dinosaur and then called it an iguana. But lizards don't have bird's legs. Dinosaurs do. This is my parrot. He's a son conure named Mango. When I look at him, I see a modern-day dinosaur. This is especially obvious when we still had our pet emu, but birds don't just look like dinosaurs. They actually are dinosaurs, and I can prove it. Most dinosaurs have very avian features. They may have beaks, bird's hips, wishbones, three-fingered hands, fluffy down, or even full-fledged flight feathers. Every feature that is known to exist in every bird universally accepted as such is also found on dinosaurs. Four-chambered heart, fused caudal vertebrae, gastroliths, even the avian respiratory system have all been found on fossil theropods, especially dromaeosaurs and manoraptors. You can distinguish birds among dinosaurs, but it is no longer possible to distinguish birds from dinosaurs. Here another division occurs, this time determined by the number of holes appearing in a particular place in the structure of the skull. On the one hand we have synapsids with one temporal fenestra. On the other hand we have what are traditionally known as reptiles, starting with anapsids that have no temporal fenestra, and diapsids which have two. That line can be shown to divide between lepidosaurs on one side, which divide into plesiosaurs and other things, including lizards, which also divided into many different subgroups, including snakes. The archosaurs on the other side also divide into crocodilians, phytosaurs, pterosaurs, and dinosaurs, which themselves divide again and again and eventually include a subset we now know as birds. So you see, gear up. we still have dinosaurs today. They haven't changed a bit. We still have apes, too. See? When you look at this, I mean, I see, I see a very small dinosaur. I mean, doesn't it look like a dinosaur? But here it is, modern day dinosaur. <laughs>